Well, good morning to your friends and wherever you may be joining us from today, a warm welcome to you. You know how good it is to know that the Spirit of God is with us wherever we are and weaves our worship together as we bring it before God. So let's draw near to God in worship this morning with the words of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23. Let us hold on firmly to the hope we profess because we can trust God to keep his promise. Let's join together now as we sing our first hymn, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Let us join together in our prayers of thanksgiving. Dear Lord, we come before you this morning with our prayers of thanksgiving. We give thanks for the many blessings you have bestowed on our lives. Not only have you created a world of beautiful sights and sounds, but you have provided us with the ability to enjoy it all. Not only have you given us life, but you have made us to live in relationships with you and with each other. You have not only made us in your image, but you have made us but that we can think, plan and reflect on who we are and what we might become. And for that we are so grateful. You have provided us with more than we could ever have imagined surrounded us with people who always look out for us, family and friends who bless us each day with kind words and actions, so many people who love and care for us. We thank you for the things we can learn and the skills we can develop, for time to work and opportunities to rest. We thank you for those who share our tears and for those who make us laugh, for those who provide our food and for those who keep us safe, for those who love us when we are not very nice to know and for those who stand by us and try to understand the things that hurt us and make us afraid. 
We thank you for your son Jesus, who has shown us that we can trust him with everything and in every way, no matter what we are facing, no matter what is happening, no matter who we are or what we have done or what we have failed to do, we can trust him completely. But Lord, forgive us that though we say we will trust him, so often we would rather trust ourselves, that we allow him only into parts of our lives and never into the whole. That though we say we believe in you, we do not allow you to change how we live and are often too afraid to begin again. Help us, Lord, to live lives that make you happy and bring praise to your name. Help us to remember that Jesus is for us the prime example of your endless loving kindness, that your grace and mercy are not just words in the Bible, but can be a reality in our own lives. We thank you for the way Jesus washed his disciples' feet and for his example of care, compassion and service. We thank you too for his acceptance even of Judas and not, that not even his act of betrayal could prevent Jesus from loving him. We thank you that Jesus took the bread and the wine and transformed them into symbols of his death for us on the cross. How can we not thank you, praise you and worship you, for you are our Saviour and our Lord, in whose name we bring our prayers. Amen. Genesis chapter 17, reading from verse 1. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the Almighty God. Obey me and always do what is right. I will make my covenant with you and give you many descendants. Abram bowed down with his face touching the ground and God said, I will make this covenant with you. I promise that you will be the ancestor of many nations. Your name will no longer be Abram, but Abraham, because I am making you the ancestor of many nations. I will give you many descendants, and some of them will be kings. You will have so many descendants that they will become nations. I will keep my promise to you and to your descendants in future generations as an everlasting covenant. I will be your God and the God of your descendants. I will give to you and to your descendants this land in which you are now a foreigner. The whole land of Canaan will, be, will belong to your descendants forever, and I will be their God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Peace. 
Your name is great and your heart is kind For all your goodness I will keep on singing Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the was near and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise unending ten thousand years and then forevermore bless the His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I'll worship your holy name Bless the Lord, oh my soul Oh my soul Worship His holy name Well, we're following through in the life of Abraham and last week we saw how difficult it is to, to wait. Waiting can be extremely difficult and Abraham and Sarah were waiting for the descendants that God had promised them, for the blessing in their lives that God had said would happen. And Sarah, it seems, wanted a child as much as Abraham did, but she was finding it difficult to believe that God would actually give them that child. In chapter 16, we find Abraham uh, and Sarah talking, and, and, and Sarah actually says to Abraham, the Lord has kept me from having children. Why don't you sleep with my slave, Hagar? Perhaps she can have a child for me. Abraham agreed with what Sarah said, so she gave Hagar to him to be his concubine. So Abraham and Hagar get together and Hagar produces a son, bears a son for Abraham, whom they name Ishmael. But you see, the problem is that Ishmael is not the son, is not the child that God had promised to Abraham. This wasn't the son of blessing. And at the time when Hagar bore Abraham a son at the end of chapter 16, uh, Abraham named him Ishmael, and we see that Abraham was 86 years old at the time. Well, our reading picks up today in chapter 17, when Abraham is now 99 years old. So for 13 years, for a period of 13 years, God had been silent. God had not met with Abraham. God had not spoken with Abraham. And maybe, uh, you know, what did Abraham think during those times? Did he wonder if he and Sarah had offended God and what they had done? Did he think that maybe God had abandoned them? Or did he wonder whether God would ever speak to him again? Well, now when he is 99 years old, 13 years after the events that took place, the Lord once again appeared to Abraham and said, I am the Almighty God. 
Here we see God calling himself by a new name. The Hebrew word for Almighty God is El Shaddai. El speaks of power and Shaddai speaks of strength. And Abraham and Sarah, you see, had been too focused on what they could see physically around them. Their physical problems, their physical difficulties and issues. They hadn't been focusing on Almighty God. As a result, they had acted according to what they could see instead of acting in faith. And here is God letting Abraham know I am Almighty God. I am the God who can do anything. I am the God who made everything. I am the God who has complete power. And at a time when Abraham may have thought that his, his best years were behind him, here's God calling Abraham to a deeper faith and trust. You know, it's, it's amazing to think that when we at times think that everything is done and, and finished and over, that God could be looking at saying, this actually is a new beginning. God had promised Abraham that he would have a son, and it was God's intention that the son that would be born to Abraham would be born to Sarah. Now, when it seemed impossible for Sarah to have a child, God was about to fulfill his promise. And he begins by reminding Abraham that he is the all-powerful God and that nothing is too hard for him. But there is in the, the Lord's word also a, a rebuke for Abraham, who had agreed with Sarah's suggestion to take Hagar as his concubine so that she could bear Abraham's son. Because you see, in the story, it only leads to trouble because when Hagar finds out that she is pregnant, she becomes proud uh, and she despised Sarah. Uh, you see, taking God out of their lives and out of their plans led to friction and division and unhappiness in the household. And Sarah treats Hagar so badly that, that she actually runs away. The Lord meets her uh, and tells her to go back, which she does, and Ishmael is born. And here is God coming and saying to Abraham, I am the Almighty God. Obey me and always do what is right. I will make my covenant with you and give you many descendants. Other versions have walk before me faithfully and be blameless. You know, when we get things wrong, we, we might be tempted to think that God is finished with us, that God can do nothing with us. But here is God saying, Abraham, I know you're not perfect. I know how you have acted. I can see the result of what you have done. You haven't trusted me. You've disobeyed me. But I am still almighty God. I don't need you to help me out or to disobey me. What I need is for you to to trust me, to follow my plan, and to do what is right. And we see Abraham's response as Abraham bows down with his face touching the ground. Abraham doesn't have to say a word here. He simply worships God. It's the right thing to do. It's the right posture in that moment. It's submitting himself to God and to God's word. It's committing himself to walk and live and act in faithfulness to God and in God's way. God, we see here then, as a, response, as a result, gives Abraham and Sarah new names. In verse 4, the Lord says to him, I make this covenant with you. I promise that you will be the ancestor of many nations. Your name will no longer be Abraham, but Abraham, because I am making you the ancestor of many nations. Now, the, the name Abraham means exalted father, while Abraham means ancestor or father of many nations. So Abraham, in the change of that name, is moving from exalted father 
to father of many nations. You can imagine when Abraham told his people his new name, some of them must have thought to themselves, father of many nations, <laughs> doesn't he know how old he is? And how his wife is getting on in age two, and they're getting past those years of ever bearing children. But God says your name will no longer be Abraham, but Abraham, because I am making you, I am making you the ancestor or the father of many nations. See, this wasn't difficult for God. It presented no problem to him. When God says he will do something, he will do it because he is almighty God. And what a relief it must have been for Abraham. God had been silent, but he hadn't let him go. He hadn't abandoned him. He hadn't given up on him. In fact, even when Abraham acts without faith, God is faithful. Isn't that encouraging? Even when we act faithlessly, when we get things wrong, when we go our own way, God is still Almighty God. And God is faithful. And God keeps His promise to us. And we see more of God's faithfulness as we read on. God tells Abraham that Ishmael is not to be the son who will inherit the blessing that God had promised. He wouldn't be the root by which God's promise would come true and be fulfilled. Yes, God will bless Ishmael, but the son of blessing is going to come from his wife, Sarah, who is now to be called Sarah, which means princess. I will bless your wife, Sarah, and I will give you a son by her, says God. I will bless her, and she will become the mother of nations, and there will be kings among her descendants. What a name for a woman through whom a nation was to be born, and from whose lineage kings such as David and Solomon were to reign, and eventually through which Jesus, the King of Heaven himself, would come into the world. When God tells him this, Abraham, in amazement, again bows his head to the ground. But then he begins to laugh as he considers, can a man have a child when he's a hundred years old? Can Sarah at 90? And he asks God, why not let Ishmael be my heir? But God said, no, your wife Sarah will bear you a son and you will name him Isaac. And that's the fourth name that's mentioned here. God's name, El Shaddai, Almighty God. Abram becoming Abraham. Sarai becoming Sarah. And now Isaac. This is the first occasion when God mentions a name and a time for the birth of the promised son. And the conversation ends with God saying to Abraham, I will keep my covenant with your son Isaac, who will be born to Sarah about this time next year. When God finished speaking to Abraham, he left him. Isaac means he laughs. There are three times when laughter is associated with Isaac's birth. Abraham laughed for joy when he heard his wife Sarah would give birth to the promised son. We see that here. In chapter 18, uh, Sarah laughed in unbelief when she heard the news. And then she laughed for joy when the boy was actually born. It was the beginning of a new day for Abraham and Sarah, for Sarah was going to have a baby boy. What's in a name? I am the Almighty God. Obey me and always do what is right. Now, whatever you are waiting for, whatever you are going through, whatever your needs are at this moment or maybe in the future, remember whose you are. Remember who you belong to. You are a child, a son of daughter, a son or a daughter 
of the Almighty God. Trust in his name, believe in his word, have faith in his promises. Whatever else may be going on in your life, remember Abraham's lesson. It is as we learn to trust in that name, Almighty God, that we discover the height and the breadth of God's love for us. May God bless you where you are today. Amen. Will you join me now in prayer? Let's pray together. Gracious and loving God, our Heavenly Father, like Abraham, we bow before you in humility and thank you that as we bring our prayers to you, we do so in the confidence that you are the Almighty God. We thank you, our God, that all your plans for us are for our good and not our harm, to give us hope and a future. And we thank you for all you have planned for us in Jesus. May our hope in him be firm, steadfast and sure, like an anchor for our lives. We think today of all who, like Abraham and Sarah, are, are waiting. The waiting may be for a child or a grandchild. It may be for an operation or healing or recovery. The lifting of chronic pain. The restoration of a relationship. Maybe for peace or any manner of things. But whatever it is, would you sustain those who wait? Encourage them by your presence and grant them the fulfillment of each hope and promise that is good and right. This week, we remember and we give you thanks for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth as she celebrates her Platinum Jubilee. Grateful for her 70 years of dedicated service to the people of the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth. We thank you for her faith in Jesus, which has been an anchor for her life and a light for her path. We thank you for her dignity, for her life experience, for the stability she has given, not only to the crown, but also to the world throughout the years as she has met and influenced all manner of people, ranging from members of the public to heads of state and the leaders of nations. We pray too for our national leaders. Father, we think of more than three months of war in Ukraine. We remember the families devastated, the millions displaced and living as refugees in a foreign land. The lives that have been lost. We remember also other places of conflict such as Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, Burkina Faso, Ethiopia. And we ask how long, O oh Lord, must people suffer before peace? Bind up broken hearts today, Lord, we pray. May your love and grace transform brokenness, overcome evil, and bring justice and peace. May those in positions of authority use the power they have to do good, to love mercy, and to walk humbly before you, our God. We continue to pray for Zimbabwe, remembering mothers like Jessica and grandmothers like Janet as they struggle with climate change and right. And pray for the work of Christian aid that continues to support and equip these women and others to support their families. In the quietness, our God, we take a moment to bring you our prayers for ourselves and for others who are on our mind at this time. Father, thank you for hearing our prayers as we leave them with you. May your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tender 
Thank you for joining with us today. We'll be back at our usual time of 10.30 next Sunday. And my thanks also to Jean and to Alison for sharing in this service with me. As we close off today, we're going to join together to sing the song, May God's Blessing Surround You Each Day. <laughs> 